Welcome to Richmond Hill, and thank you for joining us for our Tuesday evening community worship service. To find out more about activities going on at Richmond Hill, please visit our website at www.richmondhillva.org. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. A reading from the Psalms and then a prayer from the book of Revelation. Sing praises, sing praises to the Lord. Tell of all the wonderful things that God has done. You are in the midst of us, O God, and we are called by your name. Alleluia. Let us pray. Great and wonderful are your deeds, O Lord God the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O Sovereign of the nations. Who shall not revere and praise your name, O Lord? For you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship in your presence, for your just dealings have been revealed. To the one who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor, glory and might, forever and ever. Amen. Let us worship God together. reading from the book of Romans, chapter 7. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want to do, but I do the very thing that I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good, but in fact it is no longer I that does it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind making me captive to the law of sin that dwells within my members. O wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Good evening, Richmond Hill. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be ever acceptable in your sight. O God, you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I've often struggled with how to preach about sin. When I was younger, I hated sin talk. It was probably one of the things that kept me away from church for most of my young adult life. For so long, I could only see the way sin was used to demonize, to shame, to other, and to oppress. Flung at others, often from a place of insecurity and fear, the word sin becomes both a dagger and a flame, able to pierce with precision at an intended recipient and also able to spread out of control, becoming a force of its own and consuming everything in its path. Sin has so often been used as a weapon in Christian hands that even now as I speak, my words are slow to form in my mouth, and they come out haltingly, tenderly, reluctantly. 
So know this, whoever you are and wherever you may be hearing this, know that you are loved beyond measure, that you are God's beloved child. This is where we must begin. The paradox of faith, however, is that while we are so loved, we also so often fall short of living out that love fully. We are thwarted by obstacles within ourselves and outside ourselves. We so often miss the mark because of our brokenness and our hurt and the pain of the world that surrounds us. Being willing to examine just how far off we veered, looking clearly at our personal and our collective sin is essential if we are to see ourselves fully. And we are called to love ourselves as we love our neighbor. So we've got to see ourselves fully. But it is painful to see ourselves fully. So painful, in fact, that we are really good at doing everything we can to avoid it. Paul, in the seventh chapter of his letter to the Romans, seems to be in the throes of this pain. I do not understand my own actions, he cries, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing that I hate. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. There is much scholarly debate on what Paul is so torn up about in this part of the letter. Is he speaking earnestly about himself or using a rhetorical device to make a broader point? Is he talking about himself in the present tense or reflecting on his actions prior to his conversion on the road to Damascus? Just what is haunting him so much? Whatever it is, what I want to focus on here is that he names sin as something within him, held in his body but not inherent to him. In doing so, Paul invites his readers, a community of Jews and Gentiles living in Rome, to join him in this excavation of the soul, of the body, to examine their sin, to turn it over, to touch it, to look at it head on. So I invite us all now to do our own examination of our souls and of our bodies. In his book, My Grandmother's Hands, Resma Menekim describes the way that trauma, too, is held in our bodies. If left unhealed, trauma is passed down body to body, generation to generation, sometimes encoded in our very DNA. He traces the way the trauma of white supremacy in particular wreaks havoc in black bodies and in white bodies and in police bodies in vastly different ways, harming black bodies, infantilizing white bodies and weaponizing all bodies in police uniform. What this means is that white supremacy cannot be dismantled only through thinking or talking or organizing or advocating for policies, though that work must be done. But it also has to be healed in our bodies. Menachem then describes the difference between what he calls clean pain and dirty pain. Clean pain is the pain of seeing ourselves fully and then addressing what we see. It is the pain that I believe that Paul is experiencing in his letter. It is ultimately a healing pain, building resilience through vulnerability and courage. Dirty pain is the pain of avoidance and denial, and it blocks the ability to heal. Dirty pain is then passed like fire onto others, sometimes doing harm becoming a force of its own and consuming all in its path. If the trauma of white supremacy is held in our bodies, healing then requires not just a stopping of the bleeding, not just a fix or a suture, but a subterranean look deeply into the wound. So what do we see when we look deeply? For me, I see the ways in which white supremacy works through my white body, in the fear I have in facing my own complicity, or in the deep tingles of anxiety that I feel when I don't know what to do or what I say, choosing too often to stay silent or pretending I don't see the depth of injustice around me. 
but that fear and fragility and anxiety, that all blocks my ability to see the world fully, to see myself fully, to see others fully, to understand at a deep level that I am not free until everyone else is free. So my work is that I'm called to look directly at this particular sin that is mine and to work through it, work through the clean pain so that I can stop perpetuating the trauma. The way that trauma of white supremacy works in your body is different from the way it works in mine. Can you feel the way it works in you? Can you look at it? Can you name it? So then what then do we do with it? In Paul's words, who will rescue us from this body of death? Paul's answer in this passage of clear is clear. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen, indeed. Yet Paul's answer, while right for us who are Christian, it almost comes too quickly. Grace here in this passage seems almost too easy. But here's the thing. While this passage ends with grace, grace through Jesus Christ cannot be the end. Christians so often have used the ideas of sin and grace almost as a carte blanche to keep whatever doing, to keep doing whatever we are doing that causes harm. Keep colonizing, keep building empires, keep evicting whoever stands in the way of, de of development, keep hoarding, keep bullying, keep denying and dominating, because God's grace has got us covered. That's not how grace works. Grace is not the end of the sentence, but the beginning. Only by surrendering to God, only by walking with Jesus, only by recognizing that we cannot fix or save or solve away our sin and our trauma, only then can we begin to heal. Grace is that love that holds us while we work through the clean pain, looking directly at our sin, looking and working through the dirty pain of our unhealed trauma so that we can transform it not just be saved from it. Grace is the foundation on which we stand that allows us to do the work of transformation, both of ourselves and of the systems that surround us. What would it look like in your life to invite God into the healing and transformation, and transformation process with you? to open yourself up to God's grace, to walk with God through the clean pain of dealing with your trauma around the sin of white supremacy. And who could join you in this journey to support you? So we'll end here where we began and where we must begin again and again and again. Whoever you are, wherever you may be hearing this, know that you are loved beyond measure, that you are God's beloved child. And from here, from this starting point, with the help of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit, do the work. Do the work of working through the clean pain to move towards healing, towards wholeness, towards transformation, towards justice, and towards peace. May it be so. Amen. Please join me as we pray for Metropolitan Richmond. When I say, hear us, O God, please respond by saying, Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord, we pray for Metropolitan Richmond. We pray for the welfare of all who live here and for the establishment of your justice and peace in our community during this time of social transformation. Hear us, O oh God. Today we pray for all residents in the city of Richmond. We pray for the mayor, the city council, and the city administrator, and the school board and the decisions they make for all of your people. Hear us, O oh God. We pray, O oh Lord, for all schools in metropolitan Richmond, for the students, the 
teachers and the staff. Bless all of our daycare centers, especially now as they prepare for the school year. Hear us, O oh God. Send your blessing, O oh Lord, on the churches of Metropolitan Richmond. Bless all of the clergy, the church members, the church leaders and teachers. Bless all who are seeking a church home online. Hear us, O oh God. We pray, O oh Lord, for all who suffer from addiction, dependency and codependency, for all in recovery and all in need of recovery, all 12-step groups. Hear us, O oh God. Bless, O oh Lord, the community of Richmond Hill, the residential and all non-residential members. Help us as we adapt to this new rhythm of work and prayer and rest and play. Hear us, O oh God. Bless and protect, O oh Lord, the James, the Chickahominy and the Appomattox River and all rivers, lakes, reservoirs, and other bodies of water in our metropolitan community. Help us to wisely enjoy and use our water resources. Hear us, O oh God. We pray, O oh Lord, for those who are most vulnerable during this pandemic, Pray for the homeless, for those who are incarcerated, the health care workers, for those with underlying health issues, for those who are 65 and older in retirement facilities, nursing homes and sequestered at home. Hear us, so oh God. Grant, O oh Lord, that your kingdom may come here in the city of Metropolitan Richmond, in the state and beyond, as it is in heaven. Help us to be a part of its coming and its transformation. Help us to minister to others in the spirit and to accept your ministry for ourselves. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Come thou fount of every blessing Teach me some melodious sonnet Sung by flaming tongues above Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it Mount of God's unchanging love Here I raise my Ebenezer Hither by thy help I and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fault of God, he to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let that grace now, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone 
to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Hear now this benediction. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render no one evil for evil. Support the weak. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Honor everyone, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen and amen.